Hey everyone, Scott here to discuss Spy Kids 2, The Island of Lost Dreams, starring Antonio Banderas, Carla Gugino, Alexa Vega, Daryl Sabera, Danny Trejo, Cheech Marin, and Steve Buscemi, directed by Robert Rodriguez. Now, I am in familiar territory, so I, I did see this in theaters, and is it as good as I remember it? Well, remember last week's episode. We'll see how this goes. Let's see if this gets any better. We open at the Troublemaker Studios theme park, where the president's daughter, named Alexandra, is waiting for her father as she gets a tour of the place, and she's not impressed. And she's about to ride a ride that spins very fast, like he's juggling, and she goes on a time in time to take off the key up to the controls of the ride. And as it stops, she goes and hangs on the edge until Carmen and Junie Cortez, returned by Alexa Vega and Daryl Sabera, as they have the competition, they have competition against Gary and Gertie. And Junie has a thing for Alexandra as he gets her down, while Gary grabs the device from her father's office. And Carmen has a thing for Gary, which is weird. And I don't like this character or any of them whatsoever, as Carmen and Junie's performances are a little worse than last time. And this Troublemaker Studios rides could get them sued, which is a terrible opener to begin with. Carmen and Junie get ready for a party, and their company, the OSS, along with their parents, Gregorio and Ingrid, returned by Antonio Banderas and Carla Gugino. And as they get there, Gary and Gritia antagonize Junie. And while Gary asks Carmen to dance, and Junie notices something is up with the waiters. And Junie sees Alexandra dan and dances ballet briefly, which did look pretty bad as the cinematography is terrible. While well, Gary gets the spy kid of the year while his father Donegan, played by Mike Judge, in a terrible role, I'll say, as the spy parents are knocked out. The kids fight back the waiters against the waiters, and the effects on are horrible to look at. The spy kids lose the fight as Gary blames Junie for what exactly? Losing the device? No, he did that. That makes no sense. Neither does the Cortez family getting terminated at their job as Gary is either blind or too stupid to realize he's in the wrong from the get-go. Junie is depressed and Carmen takes him to the old treehouse they used to play with when they were younger, I'll say. And Carmen finds a way to get the Cortezes back in business and hacking Donegan's system. And Junie's robot bug named Ralph spies on Gary and Gertie and Carmen hacks into the system of the OSS and take the assignments behind their back. And Machete, returned by, briefly by Danny Trejo, gives them more gadgets and takes off by Uncle Felix's authority. And Uncle Felix, returned by Cheech Marin, is back and much worse than ever and the first 30 minutes is terrible and Alexa Vega and Daryl Sabera are again not very good actors I'm sorry they go on the way to an island of lost dreams with mysterious creatures they call Fegan Floop returned briefly by Alan Cumming to reach Alexander Minion returned by Tony Shalhoub about what the plans are at the RSS by Donegan are up to no good and they crash the entrance to of the island as they don't see it at first because I'm guessing they're hallucinating when Gary and Gertie get into camp get into camel poop which shows them right as these two are also terrible in this movie as one of them is Haley Joel Osmond's sister Emily Donegan tells Gregorio and Ingrid their kids are missing as Ingrid's parents inconveniently come into the picture and the grandparents played by Ricardo Montalban all these years later from Planet of the Apes and Star Trek, and Holland Taylor, as they're also terrible in this film. Meanwhile, Carmen and Junie see the island and gets taken there by some dragon that looks like Ghidorah from the world of Godzilla. So there Carmen gets goes there go, there Carmen goes blaming Junie for nothing as she just she's just irritating as she was as the first in the first film. And Donegan is up to no good, and I knew there was something no good in this movie. As Carmen and Junie walk around the island and get to a volcano and fall continuously as Gary and Gertie arrive there, and their gadgets don't work, which we saw earlier in the movie, and they don't have a clue as there should as they should be get one of as they're completely stupid. Carmen and Junie keep falling onto the 
float and find Romero, the float thing stops, and they find Romero, played by Steve Buscemi, in a wasted role, in my opinion, as they find his hideout, and they learn Romero's experiments have gone horribly wrong, as he called it his own zoo, and despite Romero is not a bad guy in this movie, that's Donegan, he's more misunderstood, and his backstory was terrible. They see Gary and Gertie getting attacked and stuck on the hill, and they save them and go to Romero's place and learn Donegan wants his creatures destroyed, as well as the island with the machine, while Gary and Gertie are such idiotic characters to this point I can't stand them any further. Gregorio and Ingrid get bumped in by Ingrid's mother and father and have a discussion of how dangerous their mission is and learn they were spies too, which was convenient. Carmen and Junie tells Ramiro to tell the creatures who's boss as they take off to find a way to stop Donegan's plan from ever happening, and their rides get taken over by lizards, and Gary and Gertie pass by them while Alexandra gets a message from Junie about what's happening on their mission, which was cute, and the flying thing looked awful. While the grandparents are annoying me half to death in the movie, Carmen and Junie destroy the tracking device in the middle of the jungle, and Gregorio and Ingrid can't find them in any further until Grandfather comes up with an idea on Junie's necklace, which has also a tracker, which is a good idea, but the scene is terribly acted. Carmen and Junie go in a place where they can hear each other's thoughts and bumps into skeletons, and Junie takes something special, like a jewel from them, and they come alive while they go while they go the wrong way and go the other way, and Junie doesn't see the dead skeletons, as they have a fight with skeletons that, heck, even The Mummy Returns has a better action scene with skeletons than that is more interesting than this movie does, and a flying creature takes Carmen and, while Junie returns to the special jewel. I'm like, come on, that's not realistic. Carmen gets trapped by Gertie and, or with Gertie, I'll say, and they get out rather quickly and conveniently while Romero is scared to go outside, but he eventually does, and I'll get there in a few minutes while a gorilla with spider legs approaches Junie, and he gives up in it, and he gives it the protein bar to eat, and Harry shows up, no, Gary shows up with the lizard, and the spider gorilla helps Junie out as they fight, and the spider gorilla gets squished briefly, and Carmen comes in and beats up on Gary, and sides with Junie, and he, and hey, go inside the machine while Donegan is on the way, and that was not earned at this point in the movie. They flip two sw of the switches of, to the machine, and Donegan arrives with his troops, and Junie flips the final switch, and the world almost collapses until the rubber band it up and Carmen throws out the device and Gertie takes them to the nest and Carmen and Judy fly to the nest and take the device and go back to the beach while Romero's creature known know who Romero is as the creator and Carmen and Judy get to the beach and find the grandparents as well as Gregorio and Ingrid are there to save them and unfortunately Donegan is there and Felix betrays them and Gregorio and Donegan fight it off, and Gregorio almost loses, but he saves the grandparents as the device is destroyed, and Gertie knows who her father is trying to take over the world again, which she's done that before. That's never told, or shown for that matter. As the President of the United States arrives with Alexandra and rehires the Cortez family as the parents becoming directors of the OSS, and Junie is on level one, and Junie declines and decides to leave the OSS as a retirement. And Romero gives Junie a small version of the Spider Gorilla, and the Cortezes fly away from the island with the credits rolling to a concert being portrayed by Alexa Vega, who she says she can't sing, but really can, sh but she really can. And this climax was just horrible, to a terrible, terrible film. Now it's time for my rating. I'll give this movie a 3.2 out of 10. This movie is 11 times worse than the first one, as the characters this time are completely stupid, 
as the kids are really bad at acting in this movie, and the adults are also terrible, and like last time, the effects were horrible to watch. Mike Judge's villain role is terrible, as Steve Buscemi is wasted in this movie, and the grandparents really annoy me for half the movie, and the effects look horrendously bad, as this movie looks terrible. The movie is horrible to the point that The Mummy Returns can pull off action scenes better than this movie can, and the music video is horrible, to a terrible film, as this is a non-recommendation. So I'd like to thank you guys for joining me, and next time we'll be back with Spy Kids 3, Game Over. And until then, let's get off this island.